Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the clinical anatomy of the nasal cavity, focusing on the sinuses. Let's begin by cutting a cross section or sagittal section of the nose and look at the general structure and revise the anatomy. Here is the nasal cavity. The nasal cavity is bordered inferiorly by the palate, which consists of a hard bony palate anteriorly and, up, and at the back, the soft palate, which contains no bone. Of course, you have the oral cavity here and the tongue here. The epiglottis is the gateway to the trachea, which connects the lungs. The esophagus is the root to the stomach. The epiglottis closes when we swallow. The throat, I guess we can call the pharynx, and it can be divided into three parts. The very top is the nasopharynx, which is in line with the nasal cavity. The middle is the oropharynx, which is in line with the oral cavity. And the bottom is a laryngopharynx, where we have the larynx, essentially. Your brain sits in this cavity here at the top, surrounded by bone. There's a small hole in the front of our skull, you can say. And this is actually a sinus, and this is called the frontal sinus. Sitting at the posterior superior aspect of the nasal cavity is another sinus called the sphenoid sinus. Of course, we have actually more sinuses than this, but it's good to know these two for now. There are other important structures within and surrounding the nasal cavity. Let's take a closer look again. So here again, we have the nasopharynx your hard palate and your soft palate. At the back of the nasal cavity, situated really uh, within the na nasopharynx, is a small opening where the eustachian tube, also known as the uh, pharyngotympanic tube, drains into. This tube literally connects your middle ear to the nasal cavity. So if we were to draw the inner and middle ear quickly, this is your middle ear where you can find your auditory ossicles, the, bo the smallest bones in your body. And this is the eustachian tube, also known as the pharyngotympanic tube. The clinical significance of this is that if you have an upper respiratory tract infection, this can subsequently cause a middle ear infection because there is this tube and it's a gateway to the middle ear. On each side of the nasal cavity, we also have these things called turbinates, which are also known as nasal conchae or concha for one. There is the inferior concha, middle concha, and superior concha. The function of the concha, concha, are to help warm and moisturize air that is flowing uh, through the nose. Now behind each respected concha, you have the nasal meatus. Some of the sinuses drain into the meatus. This really tells us that the sinuses and the nasal cavity are joined together as well. So for example, the sphenoid sinus drains into the superior meatus behind the superior concha. The frontal sinus drains into the middle meatus. We can't look at the other sinuses from this angle because it's too hard. Now you can say the nasal cavity has two segments. It has the respiratory segment, which allows air to enter oxygen and also air to go out, so carbon dioxide. And the nasal cavity also has an olfactory segment, which is the area which allows for smell, essentially. The olfactory segment is lined with a specialized cell type of pseudostratified columnar epithelium. And these guys contain receptors for the sense of smell. This segment is located in and beneath the mucosa of the roof of each nasal cavity. These receptors will make up the olfactory nerve, which is a cranial nerve number one, and this will be carried back into the brain where smell is perceived. Finally, it's important to mention the pouch here, which is the cella turkica, which translates to the Turkish seat or Turkish saddle. And this is essentially the pituitary fossa, where the pituitary gland sits. Of course, the gland doesn't actually sit on it, but it's rather protected or encased by it. Rhinitis, also known as coryza, is irritation and inflammation of the mucosa membranes in the nose. Because the nose and sinuses are joined, as we have learned, rhinitis can lead to sinusitis, which is inflammation of the sinuses. Let's recap again the anatomy. Here is the superior concha, middle concha, inferior concha. And behind each concha, you have the meatus. So here you have the superior meatus, middle meatus, and inferior meatus.
Here is your sphenoid sinus and frontal sinus. This is your nasopharynx, and remember the pharyngotympanic tube drains here from the middle ear. Now this is one angle um, of looking inside the nasal cavity, but let us cut a coronal section and look at the nasal cavity and sinuses from the front. To orientate ourselves, this here is the orbit where the eyeball sits, and here is our teeth. This is your superior concha, behind it the superior meatus. This is your middle concha, behind it the middle meatus. Inferior concha, behind it the inferior meatus. Below the orbit and lateral to the nasal cavity are your maxillary sinus. The maxillary sinus, like the frontal sinus, drains into the middle meatus. Here are your frontal sinus, which, as we talked about earlier, sits essentially above the orbit, and they also drain into the middle meatus. The ethmoid sinus is the fourth sinus we will talk about, and sits medial to the orbit. The ethmoid sinus drains into the superior and middle meatus. Sinusitis, or should we call rhinosinusitis, is inflammation of the sinuses. A feature of someone with sinusitis is essentially redness or erythema around where the sinuses lie. And so the frontal and maxillary sinus may appear red and irritated. The pathophysiology of sinusitis, as we have learned, can be secondary to rhinitis. Rhinitis may spread to the sinuses, producing swelling and inflammation of the sinus mucosa. Let's talk about complications of sinusitis. So ethmoid sinusitis is of particular concern. Ethmoid sinus infection may break the fragile medial wall of the orbit, allowing infection to spread to the eye, which can cause blindness or even optic neuritis. Similarly, frontal sinusitis can also cause some complications, and this is shared with um, any sinus sinusitis, basically, but it can cause osteomyelitis. For the frontal sinus, if you have infection here, the infection may or can invade the brain, causing meningitis and even form an abscess in absolutely worst case scenarios. Of course, these complications are rare, but it is good to know them nonetheless.